Hi, I'm Marcus Lapp with IndieMusicLab.com. So have you ever struggled with getting a realistic drum sound from your VST drum software? Whether that's Addictive Drums or Easy Drummer or Steven Slate, whichever drum VSTs you use, this is something that I've struggled with in the past to make these drums sound realistic and not sound like they're virtual. So that's the point of getting a virtual drum kit is to get it to sound as realistic as we possibly can. And these days the problem is not with the software. You can absolutely get realistic drum sounds using VST drum software. So today I just want to share four straightforward tips to help you get your virtual drum software and make it sound like a real drum kit. Let's get into it. Okay, so the song that I have here to demonstrate all of these tips is a remake of the song Cough Syrup by Young the Giant, and we're just gonna delve into these drums that I did here. So the first tip to make your drum VST sound real, record it, don't draw it in. So what I don't recommend is doing this, you know, uh, going here, and then going like this, and then like this, and adding in the hi-hats, not only will this method of drawing the notes and make it virtually impossible to get a real realistic drum kit sound, it also, it's freaking time consuming. It takes forever to get all the notes in and to add variation, all these things, and then what happens is most times we don't add variation and it just becomes a four bar loop that's the same loop over and over and that's definitely not the way to get it to sound like a real drum kit. So we don't wanna draw the drum hits in. The only time I do is just to touch it up here and there when the drum tracks are already done just to make any little adjustments. Obviously, you can make edits that way, but as far as drawing in the groove and drawing in the beat, I do not recommend that, especially for if you want an, an acoustic drum sound. So here's what I recommend and here's what I do. So uh, as you can see here, let me play this. So as you can hear there, it feels pretty real, right? It feels pretty realistic. It doesn't feel like it was some you know, electronic drawing in of the notes. You can actually feel the groove. And it's because I recorded it in like a real drummer would, except it's just on you know, MIDI pads. So what I did here is I have my MIDI pad here. You can also use a keyboard. That's totally fine too. So if I'm recording this beat in, I want it to sound like It's loose, it's got a groove, it's got a feel. It's because it's actually, it feels human because I'm playing it and I'm humanizing it by playing it in real time, by recording it in real time. Now, if you've never really been a drummer and you've never really practiced this, then practice it, right? Just practice it, get good at this, uh, because if you're watching this video, I'm assuming it's because you wanna get a real drum kit sound using virtual drums. Oh, and by the way, you don't have to record the entire drum kit in, in one take. You don't have to do the hi-hats and the toms and the kicks and the snares all in the same take. Even I don't do that. I'll often record in the kick and the snare first and make sure that that feels right. And then I'll hit record again and I'll do the hi-hat isolated. And then also the toms and the fills and the cymbals also on a, a different take. You don't have to record everything in in one take like you're an actual drummer. You can compartmentalize it a little bit, but regardless, this will still give you a natural feel because you still are recording it in. So if you're doing the kick and the snare first, and then you loop that and then add in the hi-hats on top of that. Right, you can do a lot of different things. So compartmentalize as needed, just don't draw it in, please. Tip number two to make your drum VST sound real is never, ever, 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 ever quantize at 100%, ever. Quantizing at 100% is the fastest way to get your drums to sound fake. Now this problem will be completely avoided if you take my advice from tip one and record it in and not draw it in on the grid. Because if you record it in, you maintain that human feel. So let me move to a different part of this song and I'm gonna zoom in and pay attention to how far off some of these hits are from the grid. If I can find a way to see, this see? So many of these hits, they're so far off. 
Now, I'm not saying you can't quantize it all. I will still often quantize it at 50% when after I've recorded it in because, and that helps me not have to get the take perfect, especially since sometimes there's a little bit of latency when I'm recording it in and it's hard to get it, get the timing right. So you can still quantize it a little bit, like 50% or whatever. Just don't quantize it directly on the grid. Let me show you actually what that would sound like if I were to do that. So I'm gonna quantize this at 100% and let's see how the life gets stripped right out of it. Okay, versus, let's undo that, and now. See, like this hit right here. It's clearly off, but it feels right. It feels human. Like that's what you want. Now this can be tricky because especially if you're just starting out, the same goes for tuning on vocals, by the way. This is very similar thing where if you're just starting out and you start paying really close attention to every single note and every single hit, you tend to hear every little nuance or every little timing hit that's slightly off and every little tuning note that's slightly off and then you make everything perfect but then the problem is at the end of it you've just sucked the life right out of the song quantizing your drums at 100 percent like i said it's the fastest way to sound fake and it's also the fastest way to sound generic you don't want to sound generic you want your song to have a feel and to have a groove so never ever quantize at 100 percent if you want a real acoustic drum sound the third tip to make your drum VST sound real, and this is kind of a sneaky one, it's think like a real drummer. Don't be a loop robot. The whole point of having VST drum software that emulates a real drum kit is so it can sound like a real drum kit, obviously. So you wanna think like a real drummer. You don't just wanna record a four bar loop and then just duplicate that throughout the entire song with no variation. You wanna add in some variation, even if it feels random, like just maybe a couple hits different from chorus one to chorus two or a couple double kicks at a certain part of the song or adding tension and release by implementing, even if they're just small builds that are pretty subtle, that can really help add variation to the song. So let me show you what I did on this track. Now notice the variation, especially in the kick drum pattern here. <laughs> Now this very much goes back to tip number one, because guess what? I recorded it in this way. I just recorded it as I felt it, and then I quantized it at probably 50% because I didn't get the perfect take. There's a certain amount of like randomness with this beat where it's not just a straight loop, like boom, cha, bum, boom, cha, bum, and then just repeat over and over. It's like, no, it adds variation and ebb and flow as, let me play that one more time. Like there, you have that double snare hit. That's not anywhere else. It's just a random little double snare hit because it's not a loop. And you don't wanna think like it's a loop. You're aiming for a real drum kit sound. And so you wanna record it in like a real drummer by adding some variation throughout the song. All right, and before we get to tip number four, I just wanted to let you know that I have a gift for you just for watching this video, and that is my free guide. It's called a five-step guide for producing wow factor indie music. It's absolutely free. So if you want a real five-step plan for your next song, I highly recommend it. I think it's gonna be massively helpful to you. So check it out, it's absolutely free. It's my gift to you for watching this video. Link in the description. All right, and finally, tip number four to make your drum VST sound real, use these three plugins. The three plugins I wanna talk about are RC20, Saturation Knob, and a Room Reverb. So here's what this drum kit sounds like without anything on it. Let me turn off all the plugins that we have here. So over here are the plugins. And then here's with everything on.
Okay, now I'm using addictive drums, as you can see here. So to start out this, I just uh, scrolled through some presets and I landed on um, a preset in the United Pop Pack called Neutral Trump. Now I did make some slight adjustments. I think I changed the snare drum, as you can do here, which is really cool. You can make these small adjustments. And I did also mute the room channel just because I wanted my own, my own room sound which I will get into in a second. But first, uh, let's dive into what I did here. So the first thing that we have here is just the fat channel, which in Studio One is just compression and EQ essentially. So I just threw a compressor on here with a slow attack, fast release, and that's basically what we got going there. There was already a little bit of compression on in the Addictive Drums preset, but I wanted a little bit more uh, and I wanted some control over it. So that's why I added this extra compressor right here. And then also an EQ to scoop out a little bit of the low mid range around 360. And that is all we're doing there. But now let's get into the three plugins that I mentioned. So the first one is probably the most important and that is RC20. Now, if you wanna talk about a plugin being worth your money, this plugin, I use this on every single song I ever do. It is such an amazing sounding plugin. It warms up your sound. They've got an incredible bank of presets that you can filter through and there's almost always one that just works beautifully. And so I went with the wow and flutter and then I made some slight adjustments. But notice how crazily, wildly different this sounds if I turn it off and then turn it on. feels dry, right? And now, like it's got some life, it feels analog, right? And that's what the RC20 is all about. I love this plugin. Now the next thing, which also makes a huge difference is, this is a free plugin by Softube. Again, if you watch any of my videos, you know I use this all the time. This is a saturation knob. Now I went to the Keep High preset here, which I love the sound of that. And here's without it. And here's with it. Beefs it up, amazing. Saturation knob, highly recommend it. Now finally, the room reverb is what I really wanna talk about now, and this is the last thing I'm gonna share here before we wrap up this video. So I could have just used the room mic sound inside of Addictive Drums, but I didn't have much control over it, and I didn't necessarily like the sound that much. So I was like, hey, let me pull up my Valhalla Vintage Verb. So I put that on an effects channel right here, and I just went with, I started with the short dark snare room preset, and then I made slight adjustments from there. I think it was just with the low cut and the high cut, I adjusted slightly. So that's pretty straightforward forward, right? But then what do we have here? A compressor. But first, let's listen to how it sounds. Now that's too much room reverb, right? Now listen to what happens when we add a sidechain compressor to this reverb channel right here. So that's what this is. This is a sidechain compressor and I'll talk about this in a second. Now listen. it locks it in, right? So you still hear the room, but it doesn't infiltrate on that dry kick and snare sound that you wanna hear. So the, the dry kick and snare sound can still cut through, but then you've got this room reverb that swells up after every single hit. So that's what a sidechain compressor does, and it's very simple. All you do, hit sidechain, Boom, I clicked it, which is just the master drum track. So this sidechain configuration here is telling this reverb channel and this room reverb to duck in volume every time the drum track plays, and especially every time where you have those loud hits like the kicks and the snares. As you can see here on this meter, the room reverb is doing this. So when the snare hits, the room reverb drops and it does this. And it just adds a really nice dynamic. It's really smooth. And I love adding sidechain compressors to this. Now, if you've ever done gated drums before by using a gate, this is the exact same concept, uh, except that would be a bit stronger of an effect. So just experiment. Experiment with a sidechain compressor. Experiment with a gate. If you want a really strong delineation from like the hit to the reverb, that sounds really cool too in certain songs. But yeah, this is just one of my favorite things to do uh, to add sidechain compression to like reverbs and delays. It can really glue the track together quite nicely. All right, so with all those tracks on there, here is the beat. 